Thank you for joining us now. Hi, I'm Franco Malapid. We begin from the Federal Capital Territory where the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Richard Adebayo, has said that the federal government in its effort to create the right environment for micro, small and medium enterprises to thrive has disbursed 785 billion era through the Bank of Industry to over 10 million MSMEs from 2019 to July 2022. He stated these on Thursday are the command guest house during the closing ceremony of the 14th meeting of the National Council on Industry, Trade and Investment. According to him, the intervention was made possible because the Bank of Industry further deepened its capital base to 5 billion US dollars, attracting international partners like Afrexim and Credit Suisse. Adebayo said that his ministry revised the MSME's policy to drive the growth and competitiveness of the sector in the country and successfully increased the nation's capacity to fund tech-driven MSMEs through collaboration with the African Development Bank to secure the $500 million technology fund. The minister admitted that despite his ministry's initiatives and successes, which he said were too numerous to mention, there was still a lot of ground to be covered, especially given the high unemployment rate in the country affecting mostly youth. And in the meantime, Nigeria's crude oil production rose above 1 million barrels per day for the first time since July this year. Figures released by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission on Thursday has shown but in its latest crude oil and condensate production data for October 2022, the upstream regulator stated that the country's oil production averaged 1.01 million barrels per day last month. This indicated an increase of more than 8.18% when compared to what was produced in September 2022, which was 937,000 uh, or 937,000 million barrels per day. The NEU PRC and the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited had repeatedly stated that efforts were being made to curtail oil theft and ramp up Nigeria's output of crude. The chief executive of NEU NPRC, Benga Komalafe, recently told challenges in Abuja that the commission was targeting to add about 500,000 barrels of crude to Nigeria's production by getting about 50% of the commodity that was short in due to theft. However, the latest rise in Nigeria's oil production output was still less than the 1.8 million barrels per day quarter approved for the country by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Nigeria has consistently failed to meet its OPEC quota, no thanks to the prolonged deep rooted oil theft in the oil sector. And now the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to consider converting the country's lower currency notes into coins to facilitate highly repetitive retail transactions and to avoid printing pieces of low-value notes with a short lifespan. President of the Chamber, Michael Olawale Cole, advised the ongoing trade fair where he appealed to the CBN to adopt more innovative ways establish appropriate policies and take actions that will drive down the inflation rate and strengthen the value of the Naira. The LCCI boss noted that the country was facing an extremely challenging environment, while inflation is being driven by a range of different shocks. Inflation rate as of September 2022 has surged to 20.77% amid heightened economic uncertainties Olawale Cole emphasized that it was important to note that the Nigerian financial market has remained resilient and stable with capital adequacy ratio and the liquidity ratio at 13.4% and 40.1% respectively, which are above the prudential limit. And away from there now, a number of state governor, Chukuma Soludo, on Thursday presented a 2023 budget to the State House of Assembly. The budget entitled Budget of Acceleration has items totaling 260 billion naira. This was coming about six months after the governor presented a revised 2022 budget to the same assembly. The fiscal document was originally prepared and presented by his predecessor, Chief Willie Obiano. A breakdown of the 2023 budget showed that capital expenditure will gap about 164.2 billion naira 
accounting for 63.2 percent, while the recurrent expenditure of 95.5 billion naira accounts for 36.8 percent, with a deficit of 13 billion naira. Saludo, who lamented the lean resources available to him, promised to maximize the little funds in the state coffers to the benefit of Indi Anambra. And now the Kogi State Government and China on Thursday set the stage for the expansion of business relations, especially as the states target 591 billion naira annual internally generated revenue in the nearest future. The foundation for the renewal collaboration was laid during a dialogue meeting on industry and trade between Kogi State and Chinese entrepreneurs, co-hosted by Governor Yaya Bello and the Chinese ambassador to Nigeria, Chui Jianchun, at the Chinese embassy in Abuja. Addressing the entrepreneurs, Governor Bello said the government of Kogi State was ready to engage the Chinese business community to expand business and investment opportunities with China. According to him, for both countries to make progress, there is a need for the willingness, commitment, readiness, and sincerity of both parties to collaborate on harnessing all resources, both natural, human, and otherwise, for the benefit of both countries and humanity in general. Bello who also said there was the political will to attain the desired collaboration, pointed out that he shared a lot of ideology with the people of China, politically and personally. You've been watching Business Now, coming to you live from our studios here. We'll take a commercial break. We'll be back with more news stories. Please stay with us. Now, if you just join us, this is Business Now, coming to you live from our studios here in Lagos. Now, to more news stories now, the federal government on Thursday said a report by the International uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change revealed that many coastal megacities, including Lagos, Port Harcourt, and others, will witness weather catastrophe by 2050. It, however, stated that it was taking steps to mitigate this through the provision of information on future actions required by cities that are projected to be affected by the climate change effect. The Minister of Environment, Mohamed Abdullahi, disclosed this during a side event on scaling up climate change adaptation in Nigeria, organized by the Federal Ministry of Environment in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development at the ongoing COP27 event in Egypt. Abdullahi stated that it's obvious that the challenges of climate change were enormous, adding that no individual ministry could confront the challenges alone. Farouk said her ministry will work with the Nigerian Adaptation Plan to reduce the vulnerability of communities to the impact of climate change by building adaptive capacity and resilience. All right, let's bring in an analyst now. Joining us on Business Now is George Anegunan, a sustainability expert. He joins us virtually. Thank you for your time on the news. Hello, Mr. George. Can you hear me? Oh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Frank. Thank you for having me okay. today. It's good to be back here again. So I'm glad to mm. now, be joining uh, the, the discussion. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I, I, I'm sure you're following up on the climate change summit in um, Egypt, um, which, of course, uh, has been ongoing, started in the beginning, at the beginning of the week. And what do you think we can take out of that particular summit? And how do you think we can position to take advantage of some of the issues put on the table, especially opportunities like finance uh, for our climate financing? Thank you so much, Mr. Frank. I think this uh, discussion is quite timely now. Looking at um, what has happened this year in terms of um, flooding, electricity, food shortage, um, ec economic crisis around the world, mostly in Nigeria. So I think COP27 holding right now in Egypt is timely. Hmm. Let me start by saying that everything about that um summit as it is today is centered on the team 
uh, which they decided to choose this year, which is implementation. Recall that last year, there was COP26, which held uh, in Glasgow, Scotland, last year. And it was a period where a lot of countries, stakeholders, policymakers, they came together to plan, sign treaties, discuss. There were so many um, agreements, so many discussions, so many pledges regarding um, how we can cut down on greenhouse gas emission. Yeah. So I think for this year now, they came back with the team implementation. So we have to walk the talk. We have to leave that table of discussion, go to the communities, go straight to um, implementation.